perfect. All right, well, welcome. So today we're just gonna be going through, you know, a very quick, a little bit of a heat building vinyasa flow class. And I'm just so excited to have you with me. So we're just gonna get started in a child's pose. Now you can come to narrow legs, you can come to a wide leg child's pose, just beginning to slowly walk the torso and the belly onto the mat. And maybe dropping your forehead either to the earth or to a block. And just begin to touch in with the breath. If you're familiar with ujjayi breathing, feeling free to tap into that breath. Almost, we call it a bit of like an ocean breathing because it kind of makes the sound of an ocean waves by slightly constricting the throat. Just, you know, wherever you are really focusing on inhales, coming all the way down to the belly and exhales, finding those, breath those breaths out of the belly. So you begin to tuck the navel in towards the spine. And looking inwards, our quote today is from Donna Farhi, which is that yoga doesn't remove us from the realities or the responsibilities of everyday life, but it places our feet firmly and resolutely in the practical ground of experience. We don't transcend our lives. We return to the life we left behind in hopes of finding something better. And from your child's pose, as you set the breath, gently just walk the hands in towards the body, bringing the torso up from the ground. You can continue to sit on your heels. And we're just gonna stretch out the arms and the shoulders a little bit. So reaching the right arm up, and maybe you take the elbow, bend it and grab hold of the left shoulder. And maybe you take the left hand and take a hold of that right elbow and just gently pull it towards the body. If you're living in a slightly more open body, you can always reach the left hand behind the back, bringing the fingers to touch, coming into a bit of a bind, if that's accessible for you today. And really just pulling, grasping as much as is comfortable for you. And release the grasp, beautiful, taking the left arm up, bending the elbow, grabbing hold of the right shoulder. And again, you can take the right hand, grab hold of the left elbow and just gently begin to push it downwards. Or if a bind is accessible, you can always take that right hand, bring it behind the back and bring the fingertips to touch, whatever works for you. And you might find that one side, it's a little bit easier to take the bind than the other. And that's just what it is in my experience and knowing that's perfectly normal, that's perfectly all right. And release, beautiful. Just take a few shoulder rolls on the inhale, bring the shoulders up towards the ears and on the exhale, dropping them down. And just take about three more of those at your own pace. Beautiful. On the inhale, rising up, bringing the bottom up from the backs of your feet, we're just gonna take a supported camel pose. So a slight back bend, taking the hands to right above the bottom, the lower spine, and just gently begin to bend the back, looking upwards towards the sky. Really gentle. And on the exhale, Begin to curve the spine forward and reach the arms out in front of you, almost as if you were hugging a big beach ball, just to really counteract that gentle supported back bend. Beautiful. And when you're ready, drop the palms down to the earth and we're finding ourselves in a tabletop. 
So in our tabletop, we're gonna take some cat cows. So on the inhale, dropping the belly, peeling the gaze and the tailbone upwards. And on the exhale, arching the spine, tucking the tailbone in towards the body, tucking the chin in towards the chest, finding your cat pose. Inhale, drop the belly, shine the heart forward, broaden through the collarbones. And exhale, arching the spine, tucking the chin and the tailbone. And again, find this at your own pace. As always, I'll encourage you to organic, <laughs> incorporate some organic movement. Maybe you're swiveling the spine as you work through your cat cows moving it back and forth, almost as if you're rolling in a barrel, or maybe you just take a static cat cow, which is perfectly fine as well. Your mat, your body, always knowing that you can take whatever you would like. Beautiful, as you're ready, beginning to come back to center. And we're just going to take a melting heart or extended puppy pose. So just walking the palms out in front of you, bottom is peeling upwards. Just begin to let the chest or the chin or the forehead melt into the earth, finding a nice stretch underneath the shoulders. And if you're living in a slightly more open body, you can press up onto the fingertips for just a little bit of an added stretch. Or if you're living in a slightly less open body, you can always place a block or a book underneath the chest or the forehead. Really lovely walking the hands back into your tabletop. We're gonna take our first downward facing dog. So on the inhale, spreading through the fingers, pressing the knuckles into the earth, tuck the toes, peel the tailbone up towards the sky. Maybe you find a really nice bend in the knees here. Maybe you begin to bend one knee at a time, straightening the other, just beginning to walk your dog. See how it feels to find a little bit of opening in the backs of the legs. Make a little bit more space for the head and the neck. You can externally rotate the forearms. Or the shoulders, if that's a little bit more clear. Beautiful. On the inhale, step or hop to the front of your mat. And find a flat back. So whenever you find a flat back, maybe you have your fingertips pressed on the floor, maybe you have your hands on the thighs, whatever serves you. And on the exhale, let it all go, drop forwards. Now in your forward fold, you could always be holding on to some blocks or maybe with your fingertips on the floor. To get a little bit deeper, I like to place my hands behind my ankles just to press my body down a little bit more and to lengthen a bit more through my spine. Just an option. And on the inhale, root down through the feet to rise up, reaching the arms all the way up towards the sky. And on the exhale, hand through heart center. And bring the hands to your sides, palms facing forward. Find your mountain pose. Imagine that there's a string coming from the crown of your head up towards the sky, really finding yourself tall and straight and confident. Take a deep inhale and a releasing exhale through the mouth. And another deep inhale. And let it out. And just one more deep inhale. Standing the belly and on the exhale, let it all go. Beautiful. So we're gonna take a few, what I'm gonna call chair pose rolls. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna just find your momentum. You're gonna sit your bottom back as if you were gonna be sitting into a chair pose, but then you're gonna let the bottom drop all the way to the floor. Back comes onto the floor. And see if you can roll your way back up into a chair pose. And we'll take that about three more times. 
on the inhale, rolling back, finding your momentum, and sitting your way all the way up. <laughs> and if you step backwards and stumble a little, no worries, the pose is always waiting for you. And that was my last, maybe you're taking your last pose. And we'll sit back into our chair pose. So reaching the arms up to the sky on either side. Maybe you have the knees in touching one another, the toes to touch, and you're really sitting the bottom back, rooting the heels into the earth, holding your powerful chair pose. And on the exhale, plant the palms, find a halfway lift and forward fold, release the bend in the knees. On the inhale, again, finding your halfway lift, maybe fingertips on the floor or your hands to your thighs, your ankles. And on the exhale, plant the palms, step the feet back, coming to a high plank. So you wanna stack the shoulders right above the wrists. And what we're gonna do here, instead of taking a vinyasa right now, I'm gonna add just a few of, sort of a variation, a yogic variation of mountain climbers. I'm sure there's a better name for this. <laughs> but what we're gonna do is you're gonna take the right knee and you're gonna bend it, bring it through the center of your body, twist it and tap the right knee to the outer left elbow and bring the foot back onto the mat. Same thing on the other side. On the inhale, begin to bend the knee and tap it to the outer right elbow. And just keep doing that, tapping opposite knees to opposite elbows. I'm gonna do that about 15 times altogether. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, building a bit of heat, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, beautiful. And on the exhale, chaturanga, that push-up position, tucking the elbows in tight all the way to the earth and release, lovely. So we're gonna take the hands behind the back, interlacing them. And on the inhale, just gently lift the chest up while you keep the rest of the body, all 10 toenails pressing into the mat. We're in our half locust pose. And exhale, release, let it all go. Maybe you clasp your hands in the opposite direction. So maybe bringing the opposite thumb on top of the other thumb. And this time on the inhale, we're gonna go into full locust pose, raising both our torso or our chest as well as the feet up off the mat. Remembering to breathe here in your pose. <laughs> and release, beautiful. And we're gonna take our locust one more time, this time completely optional. You could take the arms out in front of you, stretching for it as if you're in a Superman position. So on the inhale, rising up. And on the exhale, release, beautiful. Bring the forearms so that the elbows stack underneath the shoulders. Find a sphinx pose planting the palms down onto the earth. Broaden the collarbones, gaze forwards. And on the exhale, plant the palms, shift the bottom back, take another child's pose. Dropping the forehead to the earth. It could be a wide or a narrow leg child's pose, whatever feels good to you today. And on the inhale, we'll find a downward facing dog. So pressing the palms into the earth, tucking the toes, tailbone reaches up. 
And again, maybe you just bend one knee at a time, finding a little bit of comfort in your downward facing dog. On the inhale, right leg shoots up into a three leg dog. And on the exhale, we're gonna come into a warrior two. So threading the right foot in between the hands, spin the back foot at a 45 degree angle, reach the arms up into a T, opening up your chest or your torso area towards that left side wall as you gaze over your right fingertips. Take a glance down at your right toes, making sure you can see them, making sure the right knee is stacked over the right ankle. And maybe take a shrug through the shoulders just to find a little bit of improvement in your alignment. On the inhale, left hand drops to the left thigh, right arm reaches up overhead. Reversing your warrior, finding a beautiful opening in the right side body. And on the exhale, you're gonna find your version of extended side angle pose. So option one, coming forward, bringing the right forearm to the right thigh, reaching the left arm up overhead, spiraling the pinky towards the floor. Option two, you could take that right hand, drop it down to the earth or to a block and reach the left arm up overhead. Or option three, you can take a bind, bringing the right arm underneath the thigh, left arm reaches behind the back, fingertips might meet and you gaze upwards. So again, finding whatever version suits you in your extended side angle. On the inhale, making your way back to your warrior two, arms come into a T. Slowly begin to straighten your front leg. We're gonna come into a triangle pose, trikonasana. So hinging from the hip crease, reaching that right fingertips forward, forward, forward and then let them drop down onto the earth or down onto a block or some books. Maybe gaze upwards if it's comfortable on your neck, keeping a nice micro bend in that front knee so that we don't hyperextend. And from our triangle pose, we're going to find a balancing half moon. So maybe you have a block if it suits you, if it supports you, feel free to bring it a few inches in front of your right foot. Otherwise, just taking the fingertips a few inches in front of the right foot and see how it feels to begin to lift that left leg off of the ground, bring it upwards, keeping the hips opening up towards the left side wall. And if you feel pretty comfortable here, you can absolutely stay here or another option, you can reach back, bending the left knee and grabbing a hold of the left foot with the left hand and just beginning to pull it open for a little bit of an added stretch. If you did take hold of the foot, releasing it on the exhale, everyone dropping that left foot back to the earth, finding your balance or your warrior two. And on the exhale, hands cartwheel to either side of the right foot, step it back into your high plank, completely optional vinyasa, chaturanga, push-up position, tucking the elbows in tight, upward facing dog or cobra, pressing all 10 toenails into the mat. Maybe the gaze comes upwards and tucking the toes warrior downward facing dog. Beautiful. And your downward facing dog, left leg reaches up to the sky for a three leg dog. And on the exhale, swing the foot in between the hands, spin the back right leg at a 45 degree angle. Arms open up towards the T or into a T. And you're gazing over your left fingertips, warrior two on the left side. 
Again, making sure you can see the left toes, left knee stacked over the left ankle, maybe a shrug through the shoulders. Getting nice and low, bringing that front leg parallel to the floor or the front thigh rather. On the inhale, drop the right hand to the thigh, reach the left arm overhead. Reversing your warrior. And on the exhale, you're gonna find your version of extended side angle pose. So option one, dropping the left forearm to the left thigh, reaching the right arm overhead and spiraling the right pinky towards the floor. Option two, you can always take the left hand to the earth or to a block, reaching the right arm up towards the sky, gazing upwards. Or option three, taking the left arm underneath the left thigh, reaching the right arm behind the back, grabbing hold of the fingers or wrists and gazing upwards, taking a bind. Again, whatever option works for you today. On the inhale, making your way back to your warrior two, arms opening back up to a T. And we're gonna begin to gently straighten the front leg to find our way into our trikonasana or triangle pose, hinging from the hip creases, reaching the left tip, fingertips as forward as you can, and then letting the fingertips drop to either a block or maybe to the earth as you reach the right arm up ahead. Again, a nice gentle micro bend in the front leg. And we'll find our way into balancing half moon. So feeling free to take a block or some books a few inches in front of the left foot. Otherwise, bringing the fingertips forward in front of the foot, bending into the left knee, slowly begin to tip the right leg upwards, opening up the hips towards the right side wall. Same option applies as before. If this feels pretty good, you can always reach back, bending the right knee, grabbing hold of the right foot, with the right fingertips. If you did take a hold of the foot, releasing it, and we'll gently lower the right leg back to the earth, finding our warrior two, finding our balance. Taking a deep inhale. And on the exhale, cartwheeling the hands to either side of the left foot, stepping it back to a high plank and optional vinyasa. Chaturanga, elbows in tight. Upward facing dog or cobra, all 10 toenails into the mat, pressing the shoulders away from the ears. And tuck the toes into a downward facing dog. Lovely. Now from your downward facing dog, just pressing the knees down onto the floor, take a wide leg child's pose, bringing the toes to touch, sitting the bottom onto the heels and resting the forehead into the mat. In your child's pose today, look inwards, maybe as you begin to cool down, just think about three things in this world that you're grateful for.
On the inhale, if you're ready, of course, feeling free to stay there. We're gonna make our way back into a tabletop. Again, knees under hips, wrists under shoulders. And on the inhale, you're just going to bring the sole of the right foot to the outer edge of the right hand. And we're gonna find our way into a lizard pose. So you've got that right foot on the outer edge of the right side of your mat. If it feels good, you can stay right here. This is a beautiful positioning of the pose. If you'd like to open a little bit deeper into the groin, you can drop down onto the forearms. And again, maybe find a bit of organic movement that feels good in your body. So maybe rocking from side to side might feel good. Maybe for you, it's a little uncomfortable to bring the forearms all the way to the earth. So maybe you take a couple of blocks and you stack the forearms on top of the blocks. And maybe for you, that's just a little bit lower, but a little bit more comfortable. We're all about options. We're all about modifications for our bodies. If you did press down onto the forearms, pressing back up onto the palms, Maybe you just reach the right arm up to the sky in an easy twist, keeping that back leg rooted to the earth as we cool down. Sometimes in my easy twist, an option is to take a half bind by bringing the right hand behind the back. I'm just sort of hooking the back of my hand around my left hip, opening my chest and my heart towards the sky. Beautiful. On the exhale, reaching the hand back down to the earth, pressing the palms into the ground. Just gently begin to walk the sole of the right foot into the center of your mat, finding a bit of a low lunge here. And just on the inhale, reaching the arms up towards the sky, sinking into that right hip. And on the exhale, Begin to straighten that front leg. We're coming into a half split, dropping the hips backwards towards the back heel, but not all the way down. Front leg stays straight, toes point upwards towards the sky, keeping an active foot. And I'm a little bit folded forward, maybe a little bit higher up, totally up to you. Beautiful on the inhale, bending back down into that right knee and just bring yourself back into your tabletop pose. And we'll take that same little gentle sequence on the other side. So on the inhale, taking the sole left foot, bringing it to the outer edge of the left side of the mat and finding your variation of a lizard pose. So maybe you just stay here with the palms pressed into the earth. Maybe you drop down onto the forearms. Or maybe you place some blocks or the books under the forearms for just a little bit of support, rocking from side to side. On the inhale, pressing back into the palms, we're gonna find a supported easy twist. So reaching the uh, left arm rather up towards the sky, gazing upwards if it's comfortable on your neck. And like I said, if it feels good for you, maybe you take the left hand behind the back, hooking the back of the hand into the inner right thigh as you gaze upwards. And if you did take the bind, unhooking the arm, everyone pressing that palm back down into the mat, just begin to step the left foot into the center of the mat. And we're gonna take a low lunge on the left side. So reaching the arms up, sinking nice and low into the left hip flexor.
On the inhale, beginning to straighten the front left leg, finding our half split. So bringing the hips backwards, toes of the left foot point up towards the sky, keeping a nice active foot. And maybe you just gently begin to fold forwards, focusing on pulling the right hip forwards and the left hip backwards to square off the hips. On the inhale, bending back into that front knee, bring it forward and just step it back again into your tabletop pose. Take the hip or take the knees a little bit wider than the hips here in your tabletop pose. And then see how it feels to sit the bottom back in between the legs. And we're gonna find a hero's pose right before we take our Shavasana. So from our hero's pose here, I'm gonna scoot a little bit forward because for me, I'm gonna bring my back down onto the earth for a reclined hero's pose. Maybe that feels good for you or maybe you'd just like to stay right here with the legs supported. And you can always bring a block underneath the bottom if this doesn't really feel accessible for you today. But personally, I'm going to allow my back to rest down onto the earth. And if you can only, not if you can only, but if it feels more comfortable to rest on the forearms like this, Feel free, otherwise taking the head all the way back. Just beginning to feel the belly rise and fall with your breath. And from wherever you are, whether you're in seated hero's pose or reclined hero's pose or supported hero's pose, wherever you're at, we're just going to find our way down onto our backs for Shavasana. And you're going to extend two options for our Shavasana, but for your hero's pose, if you extend your legs out and that's a little bit uncomfortable on the lower edge of the spine, could always plant the soles of the feet into the earth and just let the knees drop in towards each other. That's going to give the lower back just a little bit of support. So feel free to take that position if it feels better for you after that hero's pose. But if you feel pretty good, you can spread the legs out in front of you, letting the feet drop to either side, press the backs of the palms into the mat, close the eyes. Quiet mind, quiet body. Shavasana.
maybe from wherever you are, you just gently begin to find a little bit of movement in the fingers or the toes. Maybe you begin to stretch through your whole body, reaching the arms up ahead of you. Stretching out through your toes, through your feet. Maybe if it feels good, you roll onto either your right or your left side, knowing that, of course, you can stay in your Shavasana as long as you would like. Maybe, just maybe, you make your way up to a seat into a comfortable position for you. And we'll take the hands either at heart center or, of course, one hand over the heart, the other hand on top. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I really enjoyed it. I really appreciated having your presence. The light in me recognizes, honors, and loves the light in you. Namaste, yogis. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope that you have a beautiful rest of your weekend. Next week will be our last and our final, I can't believe I'm saying that, <laughs> our final yoga session um, for the semester. I know, I'm really sad about it. <laughs> but of course, we'll always pick it up again in later semesters. And yeah, so thank you so much. I hope to see you next Sunday. Bye now.